Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles and welcome to 2.30 on Saturday, which is the title of my uh, video podcast here. Uh, every Saturday at 2.30, I make a short video, five, 10 minutes in length about some aspect of coaching or the hypnotic arts and sciences. Now, in our practice here at Wheaton, Illinois, we uh, have three areas of focus, uh, or at least I do in, my, in the hypnosis part of the practice. First, oncology, I do a lot of work with cancer patients. Second, fertility, I'm actually accredited by the Hypno Fertility Association. And the third is bariatrics or weight control. So both for the oncology section and for the bariatrics section, we have a concept around here we call the sugar divorce. And that's the topic of my talk today. As was reported in the, magazine, in the journal Science back in 2017, scientists at the University of California in San Francisco uncovered a, pre, a trove of previously secret documents about a 1968 study funded by Big Sugar on the effects of sugar on health. The results of that study, which was called Project 259, were so bad that they ended the study, paid off the scientists, and suppressed the data. It was discovered that sugar contributes to 11 different forms of cancer, heart disease, uh, breast cancer, bladder cancer especially, uh, liver disease, diabetes, even Alzheimer's disease. Uh, but at the same time the sugar industry knew this, they were telling the public that sugar wasn't the problem in the American diet, fat was. And they engaged in an actual public relations campaign, very carefully thought out and executed, to convince the public that fat was the problem. And that's why we got all of these low-fat, no-fat foods. Well, I'm a former chef. If you take fat out of something, you have to put something else in. And what they put in were carbohydrates, including sugar, because all carbohydrates are ultimately metabolized as sugar. Now, fat is the flavor channel in food, which is why these, you know, low-fat, light foods didn't taste very good. But the result of this was obesity throughout the American population, because you really don't get fat by eating fat. You get fat by eating sugar, and by eating carbohydrates metabolized as sugar. Now, we now know better, and uh, research by independent agencies show the, a constant link between sugar and poor health. Coca-Cola, uh, the largest manufacturer of a sugary beverage, has spent millions of dollars trying to suppress this research. And today, sugar is in everything. Now, we soon will have a new FDA labeling requirement where sugars that have been added to a product will have to be declared on the label. I'm looking forward to that. But according to the New York Times, a study at the University of North Carolina showed that packaged foods at your typical grocery store, 60% of them contained added sugar. And processed foods, 68% of them contained added sugar. Now, you often don't realize this, that sugar is in really just about everything, because the food industry has come up with very clever ways of disguising that sugar has been added. Here's just a partial list. Agave juice, agave nectar, agave sap, agave syrup, beet sugar, brown rice syrup, brown sugar, cane juice, cane sugar, cane, uh, clinotolose, uh, corn glucose syrup, corn sweet, corn syrup, date sugar, dextrose, dry malt, dry sweet, dried raisins, edible lactose, flow malt, fructose, and so on and so on and so on. And you don't realize you're buying a product that has a lot of sugar in it just by reading the ingredients. Now, here at my house, we do a lot with cauliflower because I'm on the ketone diet. And so we often make cauliflower rice. No big deal. I uh, take a, a chopped up head of cauliflower and blitz it in a food processor until it comes down to rice-like granules. And the, typically, I will st steam or saute these. You can buy pre-riced cauliflower. You can buy it at Trader Joe's. Look at the ingredients. It contains sugar. That's how it does, why it doesn't clump together. 
They coat it in sugar. It's everywhere. It's in your tomato sauce, it's in your salad dressings, and so on. And all of these euphemisms conceal it. I saw something today where at least they said, contains fruit juice concentrate. That sounds almost healthy, doesn't it? But it's not. It's fruit juice that has been uh, processed so that just about everything's been removed except for the sugar and then evaporated. The average American today consumes 152 pounds of sugar a year. Now, this matters to me a lot. First, when I'm working with clients for weight control, sugar is the last thing in the world they should be having. And when I'm working with cancer patients, ditto. Cancer is a sugar-loving beast. Uh, it's actually probably the insulin your body produces uh, in response to the sugar, but sugar is not something any cancer patient should be consuming in any meaningful uh, uh, quantity. So we advocate for the sugar divorce, which means go cold turkey. Stop using sugar entirely. Now, by that we mean added products containing added sugar or you adding sugar to things. Natural sugars that occur freely in a piece of fruit or uh, squash that's been roasted, that's fine. But adding sugar to any food, forboten. If you went through my pantry, you would not find any sugar whatsoever. It's not even in the building. We don't provide it for people who want sugar for their coffee or tea. We don't provide honey either. There's no sugar. We've completely divorced ourselves from it. Now, some people will say, well, that's too extreme, Scott. I'm just going to cut down on sugar. It's a lot harder to do than you think because sugar is addictive. The exact same parts of the brain light up on a functional MRI with sugar as with heroin or cocaine. And one thing that happens with addictions is there's a craving. You always want more. So cutting down is more difficult than just stopping, stopping entirely. So that's what we advocate. And the really good news, and if you're curious about this, uh, uh, Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller, The Magicians, uh, he wrote a book called Presto, How I Made Over 100 Pounds Disappear and Other Magical Tales. He points out that the microbiome in the gut, the bacteria in your gut, is constantly changing. Once you have gotten off sugar completely, your microbiome changes, and not only do you not crave sugar, it actually doesn't taste good. Some of our people will uh, come home from a, 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 a event they've been at and say, I came home and I felt terrible. Well, they went somewhere and they ate something containing sugar and their gut went into rebellion because the microbiome does not process that sugar effectively anymore. So the good news is with the sugar divorce, once you've been in that divorce for a while, you don't want to be with sugar. It doesn't taste good. It even makes you sick. So that's what we advocate for our cancer patients and for our weight management uh, clients, the sugar divorce. It's easier just to stop using sugar entirely, just go cold turkey, than it is to try to cut down or control the use. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'll be back next week at 2.30 on Saturdays and uh, talking about something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about feeling secure in your life and person. I hope you'll find that interesting. As always, if I can be helpful to you, please feel free to reach out to me. We do have a Patreon channel as well for those people who want a deeper or more uh, personal uh, exposure to the work that we do here. And please, if you're viewing this video on uh, my YouTube channel, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you much. Have a good one.